I'm Dr. Melissa Özdal, and I'm the Chief Examiner of the Carriage of Goods by Sea module for the University of London External LLM Postgraduate Programme. I've been acting as the Chief Examiner since 2013. Following my appointment as Chief Examiner, I updated extensively this module's study guides, and over the last three years, I have also written the annual supplements to the study guides. I have researched and published extensively in various areas of carriage of goods by sea. I have a monograph which is a seminal work on bills of lading incorporating charter parties, and it's the first scholarly work devoted to the subject. I have also many other publications written on various areas of carriage of goods by sea. I'm currently head of the postgraduate maritime courses at UCL, and I act as the module leader of the LLM Carriage of Goods by Sea and International Trade Law modules. I'm also the director of the UCL Centre for Commercial Law, where I lead the centre's activities and take responsibility for the success of the centre. Today I'm here to introduce you to the Carriage of Goods by Sea module, which is offered as part of the University of London's external LLM and postgraduate programme. My aim will be to highlight, very briefly, the key aspects of this course and the study guides, but before doing so, I should first outline the main benefits of studying this course. The English law of carriage of goods by sea is an evolving landscape. There are always new issues and new cases that keep maritime lawyers busy. It also cuts across the boundaries of various areas of law, including contract law, tort law, and conflict of laws. It's one of the oldest and most developed branches of English commercial law. A lot of the law, especially contract law and tort law in this country, are developed out of carriage cases. The course is essential if you want to become a shipping lawyer, as it's designed to equip you with necessary skills and knowledge to practice maritime law. And if you would like to become a commercial lawyer, this module is equally essential because it will help you develop your legal reasoning and problem-solving skills, while also widening your knowledge of advanced contract law and contract interpretation in a commercial context. The final, and perhaps the most important point that I should make, is the predominance of English law in the maritime industry. Most maritime disputes are governed by English law, and London is still the place for the resolution of maritime disputes. So wherever you are based, you will find the course very useful for your legal career. Carriage of goods by sea is the backbone of international trade, with thousands of vessels sailing daily across the oceans. The course focuses on the legal implications of the contract of carriage and hire of vessels for carriage of goods by sea. Since the business of carriage of goods by sea is risky, the law in this field mainly focuses on the allocation of these risks between owners and charters, as well as between carriers and cargo interests. On risk allocation, we will focus on the two main forms of contract of carriage, namely charter parties and bills of lading. In this course, you will be provided with study guides and the annual recent development supplements. These materials should be your starting point for exam preparation. In these documents, you will see that there is not a single textbook for the course. In order to learn the legal principles and gain a deeper understanding, you need to read through the materials referred to in the study guides and annual recent development supplements. Even a brief look at the past exam papers clearly shows that you're expected to develop your critical thinking skills. There is no point to doubt that extensive reading is the best strategy to boost your exam performance. So you're advised not to limit your reading to the course materials. In this context, case law is particularly important. For a better understanding of the legal principles and commercial dynamics, you are strongly advised to read cases referred to in the study guides in their entirety. If you look at the course structure from a general perspective, you will see that the course is divided into four modules. Module A covers the general foundations of the law of carriage of goods by sea. These are the common law principles of carriage of goods by sea, and they determine the carrier's responsibilities and liabilities vis-à-vis -vis the cargo interests in their purest form. The remainder of this module is devoted to the issue of void charter parties and the related issues of late time and demurrage. 
In module B, you will learn in great detail the legal principles surrounding time chart parties. Modules C and D will then take you to the area where freedom of contract doesn't prevail. In module C, you will study the legal functions of the bill of lading and other types of shipping documents, namely seaway bills and ship delivery orders. In Module D, you will study the Hague Visby Rules, which is an international convention governing the contracts of carriage contained in or evidenced by bills of lading or other similar documents of title. In four separate videos, I will give you more information about each of these modules individually. As I said earlier in my presentation, the aim of this video is to set the scene to the subject. I hope you have found this video useful and I wish you best of luck with your studies.